while my friends were chasing the little girls around and pulling the pigtails, um, I wasn't interested in that. I grew up Southern Baptist um, from a fairly religious home. Uh, my dad was a deacon in the church. My mother was a church librarian. Um, they sang in the choir. They were there pretty much every time the doors were open. Coming from such a religious background, it was a scary experience when Brian realized he was gay. Basically, at that point, I became terrified. Um, you know, uh, I had this huge secret. I had this terrible thing wrong with me. I felt like God wouldn't accept me. I felt like my parents wouldn't accept me. I felt like nobody would be able to accept me with this wrong with me. What I did is repress things. Um, I just denied the fact that I was gay. I wouldn't discuss it with anyone. I, I just kind of buried myself in my studies and buried myself in my work. And whenever people would ask, I would just say, oh, I'm too busy to worry about dating, you know. I'm, I'm very dedicated to my work here that I'm doing, you know, and my school work, and just kind of played it off that way. The burden became too much for Brian to handle alone, so he entered ex-gay reparative therapy. Let's uh, institute some changes here. Let's uh, give you some techniques and some things that you can do to help reduce your, uh, how would they put it, homosexual urges or, you know, attraction to men. One technique used by his reparative therapist was rubber band therapy. Like a smoker trying to quit smoking, my ex-gay therapist told me to snap this rubber band every time that I saw a guy that I was attracted to. Did it work? It was embarrassing. It was humiliating. And it didn't work. Frustration set in when Brian realized he wasn't changing or becoming attracted to women. The funny thing is that I never, even when I felt like I was more distracted and wasn't thinking about men as much, it was never a case, never a case of being attracted to women. Um, it, it wasn't changing. That part of it wasn't changing. I was, I was focusing less on men, but it wasn't that I was becoming more attracted to women. The further into this therapy that I went, the further I sank into depression. Um, the more hopeless I felt, the more helpless I felt, and the more, um, I guess, the more despondent I felt. Brian's ex-gay therapist, Dr. Christopher Austin, tried to offer false hope in empty words. He would always try to encourage me and say that, you know, progress was being made. Um, and to that, I basically would sit back and go, yeah, but you're not in my head. When nothing worked, Dr. Austin tried aversion therapy to cure Brian. He would have me close my eyes, and he would have me think about some person that I'm attracted to, and, you know, basically what I would like to be doing with them. And, you know, uh, as that fantasy would go on in my head, he would hold a capsule of ammonia under my nose and break it open. And if you've ever smelled ammonia, it's a terrible, terrible thing. The first time this happened, I, I literally cried because it burned my eyes and my nose and my sinuses. It was extremely uncomfortable for me to do this technique um, for many, many different reasons. Um, I, again, felt completely weirded out by basically sitting on a couch and thinking thoughts that were, you know, uh, of a sexual nature with someone watching. I felt violated. I felt um, very much taken advantage of. Dr. Christopher Austin, a therapist affiliated with NARTH, the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality, was convicted in 2007 of sexually assaulting clients. He was ordered to 10 years in prison but got probation. He had to register as a sex offender and pay a $2,500 fine. Brian was eventually able to accept himself for who he is and left the ex-gay ministries. And when I started uh, kind of waking up from this nightmare, I, I started asking questions and people didn't like that. And the more they didn't like it, the more questions I asked. So I, I started to look at it and go, you know, maybe being gay is not the worst thing in the world. You know, as a matter of fact, maybe being gay is not bad at all. I became more and more comfortable with, you know, associating myself as gay. Um, and it's, it's, the irony is not lost on me that, you know, uh, my, my North associated therapist is the one who actually made me okay with being gay. 
Um, you know, he, I guess in talking about it, the mystique and the power was gone away from the secret. It was no longer something to be shameful about. It was no longer something to be hidden away and treated as a dirty little secret. Um, and as time wore on, I started to see it more and more that way. For more information about the X-Gay Myth, visit truthwinsout.org.